Here's a dope animation by Seven, and it's reverse engineering time again, so let's figure out how to make this scene as requested by Lagnajit. Looking at the Behance project, we pretty much have everything we need. So we're gonna start with a 1080 by 1080 comp with a white circle, which we're gonna make 3D with this button. And then we're gonna make sure our renderer is set to classic 3D. Now let's drop in another circle called Disk One, but this one has a sexy gradient applied to it. Let's also trim the layer so that it starts at 12 frames in. Now let's change the X rotation to 90 and move the layer down in 3D space. Duplicate that layer with Ctrl D, move the duplicate up to create our first disk and parent it to our disk one layer. Let's change the layer colors of these to orange and then duplicate disk two. Now with the new duplicate, I'm gonna use motion tools to change the anchor point to the right edge like this because it's super accurate, but if you don't have a plugin for this, you can change to two views like this. And then in the top view, you can hit Y to get your anchor point tool and hover over the X axis to click and drag your anchor point over to the edge. Now let's make the Y rotation 50 and then using our keyboard, let's hold shift and hit the left arrow five times so that our shape moves horizontally in 3D space. And we do not need to mess around with the 3D handles, which would make horizontal movement much more difficult. Then we can scale down our shape to 80, duplicate it, and using the blue Z handle, let's move the duplicate away from the first and parent it to disk three. Now going back to disk one, let's change its Y rotation to something like negative 15. And now we're about to get into the magic of this setup. Let's create a new null and make it 3D, and then let's change its X rotation to 90 and drag it down in 3D space using the blue handle. Now let's name it Master Rotation. Nah, I'm just kidding. I think we all know we're just gonna leave its original name, so this is fine. Now if we parent disk one to this null and then play with the Z rotation of the null, look at the magical result. And it's all driven by one property. Let's not forget our admin, so let's change the color of our second disk layers to yellow and trim their start to one second in. Then let's animate the Z rotation of our null. So at the start, we want it to be about 60. And then at about one and a half seconds, let's make this negative 135 and then moving until about three and a half seconds, we can really crank the C animation to add a lot more rotation. Then let's add an 80% ease in, and in the graph editor, let's select the middle keyframe and drag in the handle on the right to remove any easing at this point. Now you can see that we're getting something very similar to the original. So let's style this animation and we're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. First, let's add in a solid background with a gradient ramp and now let's duplicate this bottom white circle and not even consider changing the name of the layer and change the color to something darker and a bit more blue. Now let's change its scale and position so it starts to act like a shadow. Then we can add a fast box blur set to about 60 and a noise HLS set to grain with 35% on the lightness. And a set matte effect where we change the matte to the bottom circle now a Gaussian blur set to three gives us this. For some variation and complexity, we can duplicate this layer, move it below, and then change its position over to the right and change the color to something lighter and more blue. And now that's done. So let's start moving up slowly and sensually, beginning with disk one. To get what we're after, we can duplicate disk one. And if we hold alt and click on our fill square, it will cycle between fill types until we get to a flat fill. Now let's change the color to a dark blue. Then grab our lips tool and if we click this button here, our tool will create a mask. So let's make a mask in the center of our shape and then in the mask options, let's increase the feather to blur out the edges. Now for disc two, we can start by changing the gradient colors. Something like this will do. Then let's duplicate disc two. And of course you should rename all of these duplicates to something relevant. I'm not going to, but you definitely should. Once again, let's alt click to change to a basic fill and then change the color to a very light blue. Let's grab our lips tool, click the mask button again and create a shape like this. Then set the mask to subtract and our mask feather to 100 and we get this nice little rim light. And if you're finding this tutorial a bit too complicated, you may just need to spend some more time on the basics of After Effects. And you can do that by checking out the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is a massive online learning community with tons of classes specifically for creative people like us. There are heaps of classes on motion design and I would highly recommend the courses by Jake Bartlett if you want to lay a stronger foundation in After Effects. These two courses of his helped me a lot in my own journey.
One of my other favorite courses is by Fraser Davidson from Cub Studio. I did his course on character animation years back and it helped me level up and create an animation I was proud of. Every Skillshare course has a practical component which allows you to practice what you've learned, ingrain the skills and create new work. If you've watched some of my videos on how to get better at motion design, you know how much I believe in the philosophy of practical application for learning. They also have learning paths which can guide your learning journey and I have my eyes set on this one here because I've been wanting to practice my frame by frame animation but there are many more paths you can take in illustration, film, art, photography, freelancing, productivity and more. So instead of just saying to yourself, I want to get better, take action now so you can say I made it happen. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. Moving up again, let's change the gradient on disk three to something like this. Then let's change the gradient on disk four to something similar, but a bit lighter. And then we can set both of their opacities to 60%. Now, like before, let's duplicate disk three, change it to a normal fill, change its color to white, and add an ellipse as a mask and set the mask to subtract before feathering the edges. Let's repeat the process with disk four, except let's make the mask look like this. So it creates an inner glow effect. Now we can duplicate this layer, take the opacity back up to 80 and then change the mask to make another rim light effect like this. Now let's make these discs three dimensional and this is a bit of a workaround because the classic 3D renderer does not support extrusion. So what we need to do is duplicate this whole comp in the project panel and call it extrusions. Then in that comp, we can delete all our extra layers to revert to our original disc setup like this. We can also hide or delete our bottom circle layers. And now let's change our renderer to Cinema 4D in this dropdown. You'll see all the gradients disappear and that's because the Cinema 4D renderer does not support these, but it does allow us to extrude layers by turning down geometry options and increasing our extrusion depth. Then let's make sure it's thick enough. Something my guys out there will resonate with. But remember, it's not all about the size of the extrusion, it's about the motion of the keyframes. Let's repeat with the bottom disc to get this. Now let's change the fills of both of these shapes to something bright and distinct. And then in the top disc layer with the extrusion, we can click on the internal ellipse and go to add, side, then color, which allows us to pick a unique color for the extrusion. Let's repeat on the bottom disc and change the color to a bright blue. And now we're ready for the next step. And if you found this tutorial helpful so far, drop a like and send it to your motion design friends so they can also learn how to animate like a pro. Now let's select both our comps in the project window and click and drag them to this icon here and select OK to combine them into a new comp. Then make sure the extrusions are on the top. Now we need to key out the parts we don't need. So let's add the effect linear color key and then we can color pick the color we want to remove. Let's duplicate this to remove both colors except the red. Increase the matching tolerance or matching softness to remove any edges if need be. Now duplicate this layer and remove the red instead of the blue. And now we have created our extrusions and we can change the layer color to help identify them. Then we can add a fill effect to the red extrusion, change it to a light purple like this, and then drop its opacity to 80%. Let's add a fill to the blue extrusion and change it to this color. Then let's make an ellipse, make it a darker version of that blue, add a fast box blur and increase the blur. Let's be good and give it a name. Now let's add a set mount effect, change the layer to our blue extrusion and set this drop down to effects and masks. As a last little effect, let's duplicate the blue extrusion layer, move it above the shading layer and change it to white. Let's duplicate it again and use the duplicate as a mat and invert that mat with this button. Now we can nudge the mat with the right arrow keys to create a small hard rim light. Finally, let's set the opacity of that layer to 40%. Now we're super close. There are just a few important details to sell this animation. So let's dive back into our disks pre-comp and then duplicate disk one and move it below disk one. And as you can see, we've royally shit the bed by not naming our layers because it's just a bunch of unidentifiable disks, but it's too late now. So let's double down on not naming our layers like we were always going to and move on. Let's change the anchor point of the layer to the edge and increase the Y rotation like this. Change the gradient so that the colors are both the same, but drop the opacity of the second color to zero. Set the layer opacity to 60 and drop in a set matte effect set to the bottom circle layer. And this creates a shadow for our bottom disc. The shadow layer will now follow perfectly with the rotation of the disc, but there are some issues where it gets cut off as you can see. So let's just keyframe the opacity so that the shadow disappears and reappears as if it was being obscured by the light source 
something like this. You may also have noticed in the original that the top disc looks like it's not perfectly see-through. There is a blur happening when we look through each side of the disc. And in all honesty, figuring this out was a nightmare. I tried so many options to get it right and I ended up finding a solution pretty much by accident through all the trial and error. So let's drop in an adjustment layer and drag it just above disc 7. So above the bottom half of this disc. With a fastbox blur set to 5. Now we're going to use the top part of this disc as a mat, so we only see the blur through there. So let's duplicate disc 4, drag it above the adjustment layer, and then pick whip it from the adjustment layer like this. We also need to increase the opacity of the mat to 100%. Now let's duplicate the adjustment layer and drag it to the top, and then duplicate disc 3 to use as our mat, so that the blur only shows up through that part. Let's pick whip it from our adjustment layer and increase its opacity to 100%. Now as you can see, this totally fucks everything up. The adjustment layers seem to have screwed up the sense of 3D, which is also why I was struggling with the solution so much, but if we go back into our main comp, everything is right with the world. The extrusion cleans it up and makes sure we read the shape properly. Now back in our disk pre-comp, let's duplicate disk 3 again, further reminding us how much we fucked up by not naming our layers and take its Y rotation back to zero. Then let's break its scale link and make it longer and thinner, just like my dioc. Now let's increase its stroke width to 4, make it white, and then change the blending mode to overlay and the opacity to 40. Now we can select our pen tool, set it to mask and draw a mask like this. Then we can increase the feather to blur out those edges. Let's duplicate this layer and decrease the Y scale and take away the stroke and now we have a reflection just like our original. And this is our final animation and I hope you take what you've learned to make something dope. And if you want to see how other pro animators do their thing, check out this playlist for more. And remember to subscribe for more Motion XP.